Hey goalies, welcome back to the Captain's Crease. This is my review of the Genetic 5 Pro Custom Set. Could it be the right gear for you? Keep watching and find out. I know some people want to review every piece of gear the moment it becomes available and talk about the technical specs, the weight, the materials, the year by year changes. They don't really mean anything unless you're considering your size, your athleticism, your playing style, your level of competition, and using gear you've become accustomed to as a point of reference. That's why I've taken the time to really get to know my gear, tinker with it, and use it in a mix of training, exhibition, skates, and competitive games. That being said, my point of reference will be the CCM Extreme Flex 3 Pro Custom Pads and Gloves that I wore from 2018 to early 2023. Now by now you're probably thinking, just talk about the damn genetics already. So let's get into it, starting with the pads. Now I went with the standard Bryant's 134 setup, uh, one being stiffest and four being the softest. And so it's the stiffest at the thigh, softer on the knee and ultra soft on the boot. But as you can see, it's still quite stiff. Now looking back, I should have done with the 344 so that there, would be, there wouldn't be as much of a gap uh, I'm going from the CCM E-Flex 3s. However, because I like to keep my sets for at least four years, I was a little worried about how it might break down. So I went with a stiffer thigh, um, knowing that there's gonna be some natural break-in, but I was a little unprepared for how stiff the Brian's core is. Now, size-wise, it's a 33 plus two, just like my CCMs. Um, and I went with the, uh, the Primo material on the slide side and the toe bindings uh, for the absolute best sliding performance. And let me tell you, um, as far as sliding goes, they absolutely blow the CCMs out of the water and it's not even close. Over the last couple of years, I had to resort to using pass out polish with the CCMs, um, especially when I was playing on choppy or soft ice, which in Toronto is pretty much all the time. So the CCMs, even with, even brand new, the speed skin was pretty poor uh, in terms of sliding. It's the complete opposite on the Brian's Genetic 5. They slide so well that uh, initially I was pretty much sliding out of control and out of the net anytime there was an explosive uh, lateral side push or uh, a breakaway deek attempt. So I kind of had to get used to not pushing as hard with these. Um, that's how well they slide. Now in terms of weight, the Brian's Gen 5 are extremely light and you might be wondering how Brian's manages to retain stiffness uh, while maintaining uh, a very lightweight pad. And the reason for that is the core construction of the thigh, which is a carbon fiber composite. Uh, it's something Brian's developed in 2022 for the Genetic 5, and um, that's basically how they're able to um, retain stiffness without adding weight. Now, Brian's does include their own knee guards, however, I prefer my much beefier Warrior Ritual X2 Pro knee guards, um, and I will do a review on those actually because um, I've had a bit of a saga when it comes to selecting knee guards in the past, and the Warriors do need to be talked about as well. Now, I do love how open the knee is. Um, I was a little worried about how it might play along with my Warrior knee guards, um, but they feel great. I have not had any issues with clipping, getting stuck, uh, rotation problems or anything like that. So, you know, if you wear even beefier knee guards, um, I think you'll be fine. Now, as far as the calf Velcro goes, initially um, I had it probably about halfway there and um, I realized there were some over rotation issues going on especially when I was scrambling with a really explosive lateral move um, the pads were definitely over rotating and going all the way on the calf velcro seems to have fixed that now um, I don't know how the, the velcro will hold up in the next couple of years because they do tend to stretch um, but it is a, a dual layer velcro strap and um, you know we'll just have to wait and see. Going down to the boot, I've had people ask me about the, the bootstrap before. Um, even with my CCM E-Flex 3s, I was using the Lundy Loop because I have the Bauer Vapor 2X Pro skates. However, when I switched to the Genetics, I did keep the, the optional strap um, because I thought I might need it. A few skates in, I decided to remove it because it didn't feel like it was doing anything. I removed the bootstrap and the pads feel absolutely fine. No issues there. I could get rid of this clip, but doesn't bother me. In terms of a bungee cord, Brian's does come with their own smart cord. However, I didn't like the way it felt. I uh, didn't like the way it looked. I've been with Pro Laces for four years now and I had no reason to switch. Now let's move on to the glove. Now comparing it to the Flex 3, you're gonna notice the biggest change um, with the genetic is that I went with the double T pocket. Now I find absolutely no difference in the catching feel and performance going from a single T to a double T. I think it's all down to preference. Now. 
I find what does make a difference is skate lace on the pocket uh, versus nylon. I find it's a little bit more forgiving, it's a little bit more flexible, so it tends to absorb the puck better. I also think skate lace just looks better. Now, the Brian's Genetic 5 only comes in a 60 degree break, which is similar to a 590 in a CCM or True. Um, it is quite a departure from the 600 break that I've been using with the CCMs, uh, going from the E-Flex 1 to the 3 over the last nine years. Um, you might be asking why on earth would I change now? Um, and the reason for that actually is about 12 years ago, I had a Vaughn Vision 9580 Pro glove and that was basically a 590 as well and it was probably the best catching glove I've ever owned. The build quality of the Vaughn 9580 was absolute crap. In terms of performance, it was unreal. And I thought maybe I could capture a little bit of that magic by going back to a 590 on the Genetic 5. Now I gotta be honest, historically I've always been really good at high glove. Um, however, I've noticed that um, when I first started out, I had a very aggressive fingers up uh, catching position with my stance. Basically had the glove up above my shoulder, really far out, and I think that contributed to uh, catching really well with the 9580 and then later on with the E-Flex 1. The stronger I became technically, I noticed the more I started to drop my glove. I kind of went down to the, the hip position with the glove, similar to the way Frederick Anderson plays. Now, the problem with that is that Frederick Anderson is six foot four and I'm five foot nine, so I can't really afford to be dropping my glove. If anything, I need to start adapting more of a Yusasaro stance. He's got that glove pretty far out in front of him and quite high um, due to his height, obviously. Um, but he's, you know, one of the best goalies in the world, especially when it comes to catching. So there's definitely some truth there. Anytime you make such drastic changes with your gear, um, obviously there's going to be some getting used to. Like I said, that's just something I need to work on to kind of get my glove back up to where it used to be. Now, in terms of the Pro Palm, uh, it's pretty beefy compared to the E-Flex 1. Obviously, it's a lot more, a lot more protective. But the E-Flex 3 Pro Palm, it is reinforced with D3O. So I would say that kind of gives them the edge over uh, the Brian's Genetic 5. Brian's Genetic 5, no no issues with the palm. And obviously the glove opens and closes really well, um, even coming out of the factory. If I remember correctly, Brian's has a machine at the factory that opens and closes every glove, I think 10,000 times or so. Um, so that's pretty significant. Coming out of the box, uh, they're pretty much ready to go, which is just amazing. I'm sure everyone agrees that less break in time, especially with gloves, is always appreciated. Now, the one thing I'm not a big fan of is the boa strapping. So a lot of the um, the Brian's users that I talked to, they said that the boa strapping is a game changer. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really feel the same way. Um, I find if you're gonna adjust it every time you're putting the gloves on, well, basically you need to put your blocker hand on first, tighten it up, um, put the glove hand on and then use the blocker to tighten it up um, and I find it's a bit of a hassle especially because I sometimes have to take my hand out of the glove more than more so than other goalies um, in order to fix my camera for example uh, check my mic um, stuff like that so I've basically had it dialed into a setting where I don't need to adjust it um, to get the glove on and off my hand um, but it is a bit if getting it in. I think I would rather go back to the, the old school strapping method that I had on the CC Flex 3s. Um, yeah, uh, the ball strapping is just not for me, I guess. Now, switching over to the blocker, um, I actually had quite a bit of pain and pressure uh, between the thumb and the index finger when gripping my stick. Thankfully, it went away after about two or three weeks of um, just playing and breaking it in. In terms of protection on the fingers, um, I have to give the advantage back to CCM on that as well because CCM does reinforce the tip of the fingers with D3O and I find it does make quite a bit of a difference um, those situations where um, you might be going paddle down or kind of scrambling with the stick in your hand and getting the, the top of the finger caught between the stick and the ice and having a crush between those two or you know the same thing with the post for example or, or pretty much anyone crashing into you. I do wish Brian's would kind of follow what CCM has done. Obviously they can't use D3O because of the licensing. Comparing to the CCM E-Flex 3, 
Um, I think the, the finger stalls are a bit more protected, especially with the curved finger protection. And again, that D3O on top of the index finger makes a huge difference. Never had any pain or any issues um, with the fingers on the blocker of the, the Flex 3, whereas I, I have had some situations where I um, got a little bit hurt uh, wearing the Genetic 5s, but um, thankfully nothing major, just kind of like that pinch between the ice and the stick in you know rare situations where I'm scrambling. So yeah, if Brian's is listening, um, please beef up the finger protection a little bit. That's all. Um, other than that, it's great, and the weight reduction does make a difference coming from the Flex 3s. You don't get as tired during intense training sessions. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me why I chose Brian's over CCM or True. Initially, I wasn't planning on switching from CCM, um, but when I tried out the Flex 5s, I was really disappointed in how they felt. And um, considering they're kind of supposed to be such a similar pad coming from the Eflex 3s, I was kind of blown away by how poorly they felt. Um, they just did not sit right on me and um, you know I, I couldn't justify um, shelling out for a new custom set of a pad that I can't even get comfortable in um, you know demoing in the store. And unfortunately from you know the people I've spoken to that's part of the quality drop that they've they've experienced um, ever since LeFevre went over to True. Now ideally I would have liked to wait for the E-Flex 6 to see if there was any improvement but because I was moving to Finland at the end of the year um, waiting was not really an option. I wanted to have my new set with me. Now I did try out the True 12.2 because it's the closest thing you can get to an E-Flex um, and it is a LeFevre pad. However, it had been on the market for quite a while and I didn't want to wait for the next iteration, obviously. I also couldn't wrap my head around the fact that I was a 32 plus two in the True. Um, and the pads felt okay, definitely better than the CCMs, but not in a way that, oh, you know, this is, this is the pad for me, like this, this feels great. And um, they, just, they just looked small. And when you're a 5'9 goalie, the last thing you want to do is downsize, um, especially if you're like me and you like to keep the same set for several years, you have to keep shrinkage in mind. Why does it shrink? It just does. Now the question I asked myself was, if I could go back in time and customize a different set, would I still go to Genetic 5s? And the answer is yes. The Genetic 5s were the best option for me at the time, um, because like I said, I needed a set that would be ready in time before I actually left for Finland. And that actually didn't even end up happening because it took six months to get the genetics and I was already gone by the time they, they arrived. Now, in an ideal world, I would have been able to hold off until this year and try out the Vaughn V10 Pros, but the selection of goalie gear is not as extensive in Finland um, with the exception of Bauer and Warrior and I would never custom order a set without being able to get my hands on them, try them out in the store and talk through all the customization options. And speaking of that, I was really lucky to have that personal relationship with Duke Source of Sports back in Toronto. I never had to worry about having the right gear thanks to them. Now, the Genetic 5s are excellent, don't get me wrong. Uh, the build quality is fantastic, some of the best I've seen from any goalie gear manufacturer, really. And also helps the Brian's is known for offering probably the deepest customization options, especially with graphics. However, I'm getting older uh, and my hips are getting worse, and unfortunately these pads are just a little too stiff for my personal liking. Um, if anything, I need to go with a softer pad um, that is going to be a a bit more forgiving for my situation. Again, that's not a fault of Brian's. Um, the gear is amazing and I'm gonna continue to try to make the most of it as I can. Now, if you want a lightweight, stiff pad and you wanna support a company uh, that still makes their pro gear by hand in Canada with a high degree of quality, you can't go wrong with Brian's. However, the genetic line has been discontinued and it's going to be replaced by the new Iconic series uh, which I believe is re releasing this November. So if you're in the market for a pad and you're interested in genetics, I would personally hold off on checking out the Iconics in person um, and getting a chance to try them on. I've also heard that they're planning to offer a 600 brake glove with the new Iconic series. And that's pretty big if true because it's going to get even more CCM true 600 brake users to potentially migrate over to Brian's. So that's my review of the Brian's Genetic 5 Pro set. If you like the review, please, you know, uh, click that like button and uh, share and subscribe if you can. And um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these gear reviews uh, coming up in the future. 
So thanks for watching. I appreciate the support on the channel and uh, see you on the ice.